full of your feathers? Today we are doing the real review. Time to fly. Not interview, because um, I told Blitzes <laughs> by accident, because when he told me we're doing the real um, review, I said interview and made a joke about it. I was like, yeah. in text, I was like, oh my god, I knew we were talking about the movie, but are we actually interviewing the birds themselves? That's unique in a way, but <laughs> jokes aside, yes. I'm gonna say, Real had to be like one of the best movies of all time during like 2011. Indeed. Amen. Yeah, this, in the beginning, it shows Blue, this, you know, being a little uh, child, and, you know, just him dancing and everything, but everything just went haywire. Because, you know, knowing at the time that he was the last of his species. And then, what do you call it? Getting sent with his truck and everything. And then that's where we meet um, a young Linda. And they've been friends ever since. Yep. And they grew up together. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Blue at the time, now being, like, an adult. Uh, just being, you know, calm and everything. Just, like, loving to stay until, like, these two geese, you know, like, throwing snowballs in the, <laughs> in the window. Just trying to, like, you know... Not not torture, just, but just like prank. Just, just say antagonize. Yeah, thank you. But yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and then we meet this guy named Tito, and he looks over the window, and he's like, "Oh my god, you know, because this is a rare species of birds." To and you. Then, you know. Oh, Don't sorry. Worry. Sorry, my fault. But yeah. Like, uh, and you, if you want to explain the rest, go ahead. Oh, well, it just basically just falls upon, like, Blue not being able to fly, then he gets, like, made up with Jewel, who's, uh, yeah, who can't really trust humans at the moment. So they end up, end up being, like, chained together in order to get away from from being, like, um, kidnapped, kidnap, um, <laughs> bird napped by bird poachers. So you just meet friends along the way, trying to find a way to just get the chain off. But soon, of course, it, it becomes one of those classic an animation ge generic tropes of them ending up like falling in love together at the end. Yeah, I mean, okay, because I said this when we did the Ice Age review years ago. I was like, it's one of these plots. It was like, yeah, the characters don't get along at first, but now they get along because of a certain event, and then finding out, you know, because what Blue said and everything, you know, that just made Jules sad, and I was like, oh dang. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, overall for me, it was one of the more decent Blue Sky Studios movies at the time for me. I loved it, especially the songs. Yeah. Oh the songs yeah, and my uh, best song of all in th that movie is "I Want a Party." Damn of straight, course. straight up banger for me. Mhm. Mm yeah. And another one is um, Beautiful Creatures from Real 2. But when I, I know there, that yeah. movie... Oh, just I know playing. I'm just saying. Just, like, just I know... playing. I'm just playing. Uh, okay, okay. But I was going to say was... Um, you know, a lot of people say that movie was um, like terrible. I actually enjoyed it. And plus, like, the cast was great. The fact that um, uh, there are more blue and that was pretty epic and beautiful creatures is just so great if you like uh seeing a music video of the singers actually seeing that song you'll be amazed mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> there are other scenes especially like when they met um lewis the bulldog <laughs> at first you know he looks terrifying he was like i got you good <laughs> yeah <sighs> yep it's a slobbery mess quite literally yep and of course, we can't forget, they of course also met the bad guy, Nigel. Oof. Oh, I gotta say, Nigel's song in that movie, it was, it was wonderful. Yeah. Sweet nightmares. Mm-hmm. And you know, going to like, almost end of the movie, there's like this whole parade and everything. <laughs> yeah. This is the outfit they were wearing, especially what Linda was wearing. I was like, dang, she looks nice. Yeah. Besides, that's the only reason why they fell in love with each other and be to begin with. All they did is just wear those costumes and, oh my god, I love you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not kidding. And of course, yeah. Yeah. And of course, in this movie, there is one thing in there that's real, that's actually real, and that is the statue of Jesus. Well, yeah. I mean, why wouldn't they? Yeah, you just had to get it, like, right out of the beds. Uh, but we also, you know, 
during the movie, we also, we also get introduced to his boy Fernando, who we thought is a good guy, you know, you know, a good little assistant, but finding out that he was working for the bad people. But it's sad in a way because considering that he did, he does have no family members of himself. Yeah, he was a he was homeless too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then after that, he then decided to like you know he also decided to help Linda later on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then after he helped them, they became a family. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was I was going back to that one scene where it was like two of the henchmen. Uh, uh what was it? Uh, Tipa and Armando. Uh, they were trying to feed Nigel the the, ch- the chicken bone, but they were so scared. Note. Nigel eating that chicken bone is something people are going to forget when they're a child, but considering that that's your own, like, bird species in a way. Yeah, yeah cannibalism. Yeah. yeah. Cannibal. Um, yeah, speaking of funny parts, because um, we met- mentioned best parts. All right, first, what were some of your best parts here in funny moments? Okay, well, be, well, number one, of course, being being the party scene with I Want a Party, of course, so of top one, is um, the the war between birds and monkeys. That that's how I actually really got introduced to the to, to the movie at all. Just seeing these TV, just one TV spot that shows birds versus monkeys fighting, and I thought, oh, this is awesome! I gotta check this out. And uh, let's see, other best parts. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, with uh, when they met when they met Raphael and his family, especially with his wife, when he was singing about uh, explaining to them how they first met, singing the girl from Ipanema, and and like when it went to his wife, she was singing so off key. Blue and Jules' reactions, especially Blue's, had me and my sister just dying. <laughs> <laughs> And you, Christian, any funny or cool moments? Um, of course, besides um, one part already, uh, yeah, uh, one party uh, part, and there's also a, a scene that uh, also with Pedro Bo. We'll get to it once we uh, mention his voice actor, but yeah, all the parts are great. Awesome, and you, Mr. Mike? Yeah. Well, yeah, one of the most one of the most cool parts that I enjoyed was like. Yes, the party scene and also the parade scene as well. And also, what was really cool was like you know the red bird can rap. Pedro. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for yourself. For me, I already mentioned my parts, but I remember, of course, whenever uh, like a famous or like you know good animated movie that came out recently at that year. I remember McDonald's would have toys for it, and Rio was one of them, and I remember the toys. Yep, and also there was even, uh, they even made, made an Angry Birds Rio, too. In fact, yes, I, uh, that, like, before I even watched the movie, I played that, and it was so much freaking fun. Yep, and yeah, plus there's even a music video there where it's Nigel's song, but this time instead of all the birds, they have the Angry Birds. Birds. Yes, I was like, okay, this is cool. Like how the two D and three D, it's uh, the Roger Rabbit syndrome. I did not know that. I actually want to check that out soon. I yeah. will make you an, an angry bird, bird too. Yeah. I, I remember playing the Angry Birds, you know, um, and real game when I was a child. Because at the time, Angry Birds would do collaborations with anything. But overall, I thought the games were really cool too. Yeah. Uh, oh, what also was um, because I didn't laugh at this scene when I was a kid, but looking at it now, it was pretty funny. Especially when that security guard was like jamming to the music and then just taking off his clothes and revealing that he was supposed to go to the parade. Well, yeah. but then of course, yes, it's like, oh, it's okay, I got you, little birdie. Oh no, this bird's a psycho. <laughs> night night. Yeah, he put him to sleep. And also the scene later, um, uh, he's like. Officer, like, because he's holding up the uh, napkin with the chloroform, is like, um, he did like this, woo, and then the cop sniffed it and he passed out too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, and also, of course, you know, like, uh, Moe's Weird is like, of course, you know, they they have a law of birds, the bad guys, they have a law of birds captured, but one of them wasn't a bird, and that was the bat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, bats, bats do fly, but, they, but they're not a type of bird. Okay, well, that's just on the henchmen, because, of course, when you, when you get a bad guy, and he has, like, two incompetent henchmen, of course, yeah. You know, the Jasper, and you got your Jasper and Horuses, you got your Scratchy Grounders, you got your classic, you know, Bumbling Henchman duo. Well, oh, that's a good reference, Jasper and Horus, that's a uh, nice uh, callback. Yeah. But yeah, overall, again, the movie is great, and now moving on to the cast. What? All right, starts off fresh, let's... Would you like to talk about Blue's voice actor in this one? Uh, Jesse Eisenberg. It took me this long to remember that I first got introduced to him in this 2005 horror comedy called Cursed. Uh, yeah, it's also like a werewolf um, type, type of deal. So, it, I, I, Because I remember way back when I was a kid and saw this one, the, the, cl the climax. It's so freaking crazy. And of course, I did see him in other different stuff, like of course the social, the social network, and freaking Batman versus Superman. We don't talk about that. But oh, oh, oh well, I mean, like what we'll say as a recovery to rub some dirt on that. Um, Zombieland and uh, what, what else was I thinking about? Zombieland and Adventureland. Yeah, yeah. But but anyway, overall, I say that he did. Perfect. Like he did nail, of course, Blue being, of course, very cautious and nervous and, well, overall intelligent because, you know, just the typical nerdy type of characters. I agree 100%. You know, um, during when I was a kid, you know, Blue, you know, he did have his quirks, but learning, like, when you grow up, because it's like this, because it, it makes common sense, like, as kids, you think um, the main characters are just being rude for no reason, like, for example, Benson or Squidward, but growing up and, like, maturing, realizing they actually had valid points. Yeah. But, yeah, I gotta say, Jesse, he did great as uh, Blue. And you, Christian? You basically sum it up for me, and this was my introduction to Jesse Eisenberg. It is sad, of course, this is his only voice role, him and the uh, Angry Birds real game and uh the sequel but still jesse did great as blue uh whoever decided to have jesse voice blue did an excellent job yeah <laughs> speaking of jesse eisenberg of course if you've seen this meme before he they compare him to michael Sarah or andy samberg well yes i have i've heard that before <laughs> and yeah. i can see the airlines of both a little bit mm -hmm. and you mess my what you thought of his performance I think he did a great job. Awesome. Okay, now to Drew. Christian, explain. All right. She is voiced by none other than the beautiful Annie Hathaway. Uh, my first address. Did I say Annie? Yes. Rick. Okay, Anne Hathaway. Um, I first got to know her in Hoodwinked, the first one where she voiced um, Red, okay, Red Ryan Hood. Uh, she did pretty good, and uh, she did Arrogant and uh, real voice Jewel. She did pretty well, and yeah, making her sound really beautiful and stuff. And she's a really great singer, especially that scene. And I want a party where she's like, da, 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 da. that was epic. <laughs> yes, uh, this was my dream. And so also, um, she did a movie with was it Meryl Streep, uh, Devil Wears Prada? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, um, but yeah, Annie, Anne, Anne is great. Uh, next. Uh, I was gonna say yeah. Um, this was my introduction to her. Um, overall and live action is when she played Catwoman. But yeah, other than her works from there, I've seen her other movies and shows that she's appeared. Uh, surprisingly, but yeah, I agree. She is a great actor, especially when she played Jewel. Like ten out of ten for me. And you fresh. Well, well, yes, this is my introduction as well. At first, Jewel was kind of like a little bit harsh, but even though, like, yes, having a hard time just being able to, like, trust humans after she's been taken away. But, like, she does have her moments when she can be, well, a, a little bit funny. 
and well, and 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 this is and this is like a little bit hilarious as well. Like this is one of the first movies that my sister did predict that sh that the characters would fall in love at the end. When Blue and Jewel they just made it up, Blue got to be able to fly and well, <laughs> and it's a little bit cool for myself. Awesome, and you, Master Ring? Um, I think this movie was one of the best movies that I've watched since I was a kid. Dude, he talked. He talked about the cast, like the oh. cast. Yeah, we're talking about right. Julie. What you thought of the character and her and her actor? Um, I'd say he did a good job. She, for, did he? I didn't I know Anne Hathaway was the guy. Damn. She, she. I think she did a good job. All right. Next up, the very good duo they are. Will I am and Jamie Fox as Pedro and Nico. Uh, these birds, they're they're like really cool and especially their vibes. What I especially like from both of them, like yeah, Nico just being awesome as a whole, but Pedro, he got some mad skills. Very. Yeah, uh, that's the thing I was about to bring up. Okay, so they're on a um tram or. Uh, not a tram, uh, what, rail car, no. Trolley. You know those things? Trolley. Thank you, thank you. Trolley, yeah. Guys. Nice. Um, but anyway, yeah. Um, uh, they, they wanted to set the move for, um, Blue and Jewel and Pedro. Uh, what to do is like, check out. Get, 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 go. Get, 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 go. Take it, take it to the full. Show, show, car, Drop it, 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 drop yeah. But my introduction to Boy and was actually in Madagascar Sketchy Africa where he voiced a character named Moto Moto. Yeah, this was my introduction to Will I Am. Uh, and also no go ahead. Uh, I, was, I was gonna point out the obvious too. This along with Samurai Jack technically when he sings the theme song. Oh yeah, of course. But anyway, um also, besides uh, those movies, um, and Garfield, because uh, of the Black Eyed Peas song, that's how I, got, I knew about the Black Eyed Peas, because of the song Hey Mama. And then, again, I could know him better in a game I have on the week called Black Eyed Peas Experience. It's just a dancing game, and it's pretty awesome. And Will I Am is pretty dope. Okay, again, with the whole multiple different intros, I mean, you think by this time that you might be able to like know him by then? I mean, yeah. Sorry. To be fair, no offense. Um, but yeah. Now going with Jamie Foxx, this was my introduction to him. Others were like when he played Electro from The Maze Experiment 2 and No Way Home. Um, what else was there? Uh, Due Dates and many more. But again, he did good as Nico. And you guys for his introduction? Yeah, I mean, before I even, I mean, before I even got to know him, <laughs> my sister unknowingly thought that... Like he like he was female because of the name because when I when I, like when I first like learned about his name knowing that it's not his actual name just just he was just listing down like a unisex name because like female comedians were just the hit for some thing for some reason if I remember correctly but I really got to know him by one of his songs unpredictable I just had no idea he was that good of a singer <laughs> yeah and he proved it in uh, the song. Uh, and uh, what they sing uh, with for Jewel and um, Blue. But yeah, this was my addition to J. Fox, but live action, it was Jude and Electro and Mrs. Spider-Man 2, which he did brilliant, by the way. And yeah, they, I like Nico. Um, besides him being a good singer, he's just a cool guy after all. I love his signature bottle cap hat. And yeah, he's pretty dope. <laughs> But it was uh, what Blue said to him, like, you know, insulting him. He was like, oh, come on. All he all he said was, I hate Samba. Uh, no, but again, you know, just offending him in a little bit, but... Oh, yeah. All right, next up, Watch out. George Lopez is Raphael. So before, it, this was my third introduction. My first ones were, yeah, the Smurfs live action movie and the George Lopez show. You guys? George Lopez show. George Lopez, George Lopez show this and um, a movie called Escape from Planet Earth. He a voiced um, uh, like I think it's like a dog-like alien. No, nope. no, nope. that was that that was the mouse alien voiced by um, uh, Craig Craig Robinson. He was the three. He was like the slug alien. 
I don't gotcha. Thank you, Josh. Yep. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> This is like where Raphael's personality is being energetic and just having the flow, especially giving Blue advice. He's a pretty cool dude. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, he's like a, a father figure as sort of way to Blue. Like him advice and love advice. And he's so lovey jovey with his wife. And no matter what, how bad her voice does sound, he doesn't mind. He's like, oh, she sounds so beautiful. Hey, I mean, like, when it's true love, I mean, like, nothing negative can get to you. But for me, like, one of my favorite moments is, like, when he was trying to confront Blue after he and Jewel had that argument. He did, like, when he was mentioning that he wasn't going to go to Carnival, but instead home, it was a choice that he makes with his heart, not with his mind. That's, like, very powerful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then next up, would you like to explain the, the bulldog, Mr. Frisch? Uh, well, Louise, yes, of course, the basic old, you know, you have your basic comic relief characters, and, like, he did, he did technically kind of, like, help out, help him, help him blue you free due to his constant, um, saliva, saliva, and, well, yes, he just basically just there, just, just to be hilarious, just to make the kids and babies laugh, and for Tracy Morgan, I first got to introduce him from Little Man. That's pretty cool, dog. Too, Chris. Yeah. This was my introduction. My other introduction was really shocking when he was in um, our area. Oh, right. Yes, he was the bum. Oh, yeah. He was the bum. He was the bum. I keep forgetting. He plays the bum head, dude. Yeah, Central Page. Watch you, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Tracy Morgan overall did good for, um, for Lewis. I give him a 10 out of 10. Yeah. And, of course, uh, Christian, would you like to explain the villain of the story? I'm sorry? Would you like to explain the main villain of the story? Okay, Nigel. Yes, the devious Nigel. I was such a beautiful bird. I love torturing birds. Yeah, Jermaine Clement did pretty good as this guy. Made himself like, very mischievous and think he's all devilishly handsome and all. This was like real introduction to I uh night well, I mean J I mean Clement. I don't know what other words he's done, but uh, for you guys. Um hello, he was he was Tamatoa from Moana and also Boris the Animal, Men in Black Three. Um, yeah, I was gonna mention that, yeah. Well thank you for reminding no. me. Mm hmm But I gotta say, this is the personality in this Vulcan thing on this this villain, he did really impressive, like, I, I gotta say. I mean, sure, like, he was fine for me, but nowadays I just I mainly prefer just Tomatoa. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. But I would be interested if James Woods voiced him instead. Actually, that's a good fit. Yeah. Alright, next one. Fresh, would you like to explain Linda? All right, well, yeah, she's basically just domesticated Blue as her own companion. I'm not going to say really pet, since Blue doesn't really kind of like that word, even though if it's true. But she just uh, worked, she just worked as, a, as, a librar as a librarian and just really not that big on travel, since Blue can't really fly all that much. But, I mean, coincidentally, uh, building up a relationship with Tulio, I mean... Despite the fact that they only fall in love again was due to the costumes, which was kind of stupid, but she does prove to just be an okay character. I mean, yes, but for her actress that played her, Leslie Main, yeah, this was my introduction to her, and she did the incredible for Linda. <laughs> and, and, and the funny thing is, like, I do remember, like, before I even watched Rio. And like I remember watching an episode of Fairly Odd Parents where where um Timmy's dad was just giving up on life and deciding to just become a female named Linda. And I was like watching a movie, I was like, Oh my god, how co how convenient. Another character named Linda. Yep. <laughs> it was, it was and, and for Leslie's other like, you know, work, the cable guy, Big Daddy, George of the Jungle, the forty year old um virgin, knocked up, Joe Taylor. Funny people, this is 40, the other woman, blockers, and much more. She's just a terrific actress. Hmm. 
Huh. I'm like, let me just say that. I do remember what. Oh, no, wait. Unless the. I, unless I do remember watching both George of the Jungle movies back then, but I guess I wasn't paying attention. Oh, it's not the second one. Mm, that's alright. Mm. And, uh, going to, uh, Tulio, uh, Christian, would you oh, like wait, to... Uh, you didn't, uh, ask me about Wesley. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm assuming this was your introduction, no? Well, yes, and, uh, besides movies you mentioned like uh cable guy and uh well my street life action uh, uh jack dresser was the other woman because i didn't know her name at the time because every time i see her number like hey that's a crazy lady from the other woman but now i know her name fully i can address her as less than man and let's not forget she was in uh the crude sequel of the new age where she was um a mrs uh better man which she did great and less than man overall is a great actress she's a beautiful woman and linda uh, Winston herself, she did great. Linda is an alright character, but um, she has her moments. Yeah. Alright. Uh, next up with Tulio's voice actor, would you like to explain, Christian? I have no idea um, what her uh, stuff is. Um, so, this actor's name is Rodrigo um, Santoro. And let's see, other than being in Rio, he was in Lost, the end of the show. Uh, let's see, what else? Love, actually. He was in 300, which I now discovered, because I remember watching the movie when I was a kid, you know, the movie that named This is Sparta. I don't know why I was interested in that movie when I was a kid, because there was nothing but blood and brutal stuff, so I don't yeah. know why I was Yeah, interested. that movie was called 300. We, we got it. Yeah, I just right. mentioned that. Mm -hmm. We're gonna see. This but anyway, um... Really, sir? You don't know there's seen... Good. Okay. Um, even though I've never seen any other movies uh, with uh, Rodrigo, um, his character Tulio, yeah, he's pretty um, okay. Even though he claims that he can speak to birds, he doesn't really, but uh, he's, at least he's trying his best. But, <laughs> oh man. Uh, okay, besides that um, pair 18 with the costumes, because Linda accidentally went up in a parade float and this guy kept uh, telling her something and, um, uh, uh, Portuguese, whatever, and uh, to say, hey, he wants you to shake your booty. I just found something surprising. So he does um, Brazilian dubs, and apparently he played Stuart Little in Stuart Little 2 for the Brazilian dub. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Good yeah. But yeah, Julio, he's, he's a interesting fellow, nothing much. Right. Next up, the actor that played, yes, Fernando, I know him very well, like, yeah, uh, Jake T. Aust um, Austin, yeah, he, you know, he's mostly known for playing Max from Wizards of Beverly Place. And that was him? Yep. Mm -hmm. And Diego from Go Diego wow. Go. Wow, Mike. Oh, yeah. Well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, who are you, like, saying anything? Okay. It was basically Wizards by introduction because, of course, this was before Rio. Of course, um, growing up, I didn't like uh, put two two together. Not so Gold Diego Go, but you saying that uh, he voiced Gold Diego Go and the fact that he was this—that's just wow. I have a lot of respect for JT. Yeah, but as we explained from earlier the review, you know. Fernando, you know, he was just influenced by bad people, so that's why he, what he is, you know, just to try to get by, because, again, he was homeless and just trying to get some money, you know, but after, like, meeting, you know, Linda and Tulio, you know, just, you know, trying to have, like, a new leaf and everything, you know, trying to really good for him. I wish we found out why went to his family, why he was uh, homeless and an orphan for his wife, but, oh, well, but it's still sad about it. That's true. Yeah. Next to uh, Carlos Ponce, who played Marcel. Yeah, Nigel's owner. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, although, yeah, he was not, you know, really, you know, terrifying, but he was mostly strict, especially, no, well, not with Nigel, but this henchman. But I just like the part where they all get arrested at the end. It was funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any other opinions from you guys? 
Yeah, not really all that much to be uh, like a, a threatening, uh, you know, guy. He's it, it, alright. But for one of his henchmen, I was really surprised. Yeah, one of his henchmen, the fat one, uh, Tifa, he was voiced by Jeffrey Garcia, who you may know as Sheen from Jimmy Neutron and Pip from Back of the Barnyard. Yeah. And uh, the guy that voiced Marcel, he was also San Diego and Maya Miguel. And, of course, I've seen Perry Ferry. He was a character named Bonito, so just to clarify. Got you, I got you. Yeah, really cool. And yeah, speaking of those um, goose from earlier, that was Jay Lynch and Wanda Sykes. They did awesome in there, you know, just being funny overall. Geese, plural, but not the nitpick, but but yes, I agree. I... Mm-hmm. Okay, got you. Let's see. Anybody else? I think that's pretty much it from there. Alright. And I'll do final thoughts. Okay. On. So yes, as we've been saying from like the review, this again was one of the best movies from 2011. If you haven't watched it, give it a watch. It, like it's really good, especially watching the sequel. Like uh, overall, you know, I give it a, a million. It was pretty good. Count in. I give it a million as well. <laughs> uh, like again, nowadays it's one of those many rare occasions where I just really want to just go back and see how it is it's it was fine when i was a kid but looking back at it it's still just all right as it can be it does have its moments to just be hilarious and a little bit heartwarming and just well again when blue sky was still in its prime i like well of course my last good movie from that from the studio overall is spice in the sky which is coincidentally another <laughs> movie focused on birds but you know, i agree with you Awesome. And we'll see you guys next time for the next review.